the US Naval War College in Newport. One of the professors here is among the most influential strategists in American military planning and was involved in the recent restructuring of the US Armed Forces. He believes there's a region of risk stretching from Asia via the Middle East to Africa, an area of danger that has to be eradicated. This is the argument in his book, The Pentagon's New Map. Does this mean more wars? No, I think it requires the United States in many ways to bring a Europe, a Russia, a developing Asia into the reality that the United States has been dealing with across this non-integrating gap for the last 15 years. We have been intervening in, in uh, 10 or 12 situations every year for the last 15 years. That's how you get those 150 interventions. And in many ways, what we need to do is to move off the model that says the U.S. does all the military interventions. Maybe we get the Europeans to do the peacekeeping afterwards, and maybe we get the Japanese to pay for it. A form of cooperation already tried out in the Horn of Africa. Here, the Americans asked for the support of the German Navy, officially in the battle against terrorism. But critics say that this battle is often indistinguishable from the protection of American oil interests. The term I use is it's being transformed into a global oil protection service. That is, that more and more the military is being devoted to the protection of overseas oil fields, refineries, pipelines, loading facilities, and tanker lanes. Now, I should say that historically the United States has always had a big military presence in the Persian Gulf area, and that's always been for the purpose of protecting oil. That goes back decades. But what I argue in my book is that that same principle is being extended to other areas of the world where the United States looks for its petroleum, to Latin America, Africa, and the Caspian Sea Basin. In order to avoid creating such an onerous burden where you're going in and trying to police, you know, like an entire continent of Africa, I would argue at first you're going to try to go in and deal with the worst situations and uh, display a flexibility and what we call a small footprint, not coming in with a massive force, but coming in with a small force to do things that need to be done and then withdrawing. Over time, I think what you want to create is a long-term military-to-military cooperation uh, program or system of programs that would allow a NATO and a an, uh, United States military to come in and create as much as possible stable, functioning militaries that respond to civilian control by good governments there. And this is happening, the star-spangled banner in the desert sands. U.S. soldiers on maneuver on West African soil with African troops. My ass. 607 McKnight. Military cooperation treaties make it possible. The Pentagon's official interpretation, training provision for African soldiers, exporting democracy to the dark continent. Pure coincidence that the maneuver is taking place in West Africa. Oil certainly, I think, is the main reason for U.S. interest in Africa right now. Certainly, the Department of Defense says that it has achieved a strategic importance because of the oil there. But it is also a site for terrorist organizations have located in the area. So it's a combination of terrorism and oil that's bringing the United States in. And by the way, that's a combination that appears in many places. In Colombia, uh, it's oil and terrorism. In Georgia, it's oil and terrorism. These two things tend to come together in many parts of the world. In Sao Tome, it's just oil so far. America's presence is currently restricted to an outsized relay station for the Voice of America. Strange, though, that more and more soldiers are being seen here, say the locals. They suspect that the Pentagon could also be making use of the site, that there may be plans in Washington's Defense Department to set up a naval base in Sao Tome. Nothing but rumors, according to the first official visit to Sao Tome from America's State Department. 
We were not, uh, although there was great speculation in the press that that was, in fact, the very reason we were there. Um, no, we, we, we did not discuss that. There is a maritime, West Africa maritime patrol, like a Coast Guard, what we would call a Coast Guard program, that we were trying to initiate with uh, the Pentagon, um, and that would include some of the, of the West Coast uh, maritime areas, including San Tome. So we did look at um, if there were some coastal patrol training we could do. But on the security or military side, that was about the extent of it. But as I know, General Carlton Fulford was there at the same time. I think it wasn't just for, for a holiday trip. Uh, General Fulford was, I don't think, it was maybe there when I was 2001, there. I think yeah, it was, yes. He, and I think he was doing a tour and um, partially because this maritime coastal patrol, this Coast Guard, uh, obviously needs Pentagon input, we encouraged, mm -hmm. we at the State Department encouraged European command to go take a look. The Persian Gulf. Historically, it began with the U.S. sending military advisors and sending weapons, arms, arms transfers, military advisors, military instructors, and expanding over time to the establishment of bases and the deployment of troops permanently in the area. So there's a trajectory you could see in the Middle East. Well, that same trajectory is being followed now in the Caspian Sea first military advisors and the supply of weapons. Now the United States is establishing permanent military facilities in the Caspian Sea. We also have American troops in Georgia and at a lower level but moving along quickly uh, a US military buildup in Africa which is becoming more and more important for the supply of oil. So you have military advisors, no bases yet but the Department of Defense is looking at locations in Africa to establish bases. The alarm bells have been ringing for the American military since an internal study claimed that rival China is also trying to extend its strategic position in the race for resources. According to the study, Peking is setting up new naval bases and airstrips in an apparent bid to secure petroleum transport from the Persian Gulf. Most of the growth in consumption mm -hmm. is going to come from Asia. Uh, already since uh, the year 2000, something like 40% of the total growth in world oil demand has come from one country, one country, China. I worry that in the competitive pursuit of foreign oil, that especially the United States and China might clash in the Caspian Sea region where both of them are looking for oil. Now I wouldn't argue that this would be through intentional policy. I'm not saying that they seek to to go to war with one another. But both of them are seeking allies in the region and providing military advisors, sending weapons into the area, building new military ties with local powers in a competitive way that is very reminiscent of the period before World War I in the Balkans when you had the big powers all competing for advantage in, in a very volatile area. Competition that's long been evident in Africa too. The new oil dorado that America's banking on to secure its supplies. 25% of US oil imports are expected to come from the reserves of the dark continent in future. That's more than America receives from Saudi Arabia. In Chad, the latest member of the club of African oil countries, American oil companies dominate the scene. They built the oil wells and the pipeline through which oil now flows over a thousand kilometers to the Atlantic coast in Cameroon and out to the loading terminal at sea. But now the USA's rival, China, has claimed rights and is negotiating with the government of Chad for access to the precious resource, oil.